let's take a moment to talk about circles, okay, and standard form of circles on the coordinate plane. Um, as we get into more pre-calculus stuff, we, we talked, put up videos about a week ago about a basic overview of conic sections, okay, and how you can look at the HK and how it moves the vertex, okay? We're going to talk specifically about circles for a second because in circles you're not moving the vertex, you're moving the center of the circle, okay? So a circle is essentially, it, and, and mathematically this just works, okay? Blow your mind, right? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So I didn't write that down, but let's do it. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, so this is a circle centered at the origin. Okay, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, any other circle, you're going to have this the vertex or the center. Okay, the same word that we use for vertex, how it shifts in other uh, conic sections. For a circle, it's the center, right? But just think, like, it's the hub of where the form goes. So it's hk. Okay, that's we just use hk. Why? I don't know. We just started doing it. We're like... Halfway through the alphabet, let's use those letters. Pretty sure that's what happened. So here's the form. X minus H, I know my handwriting isn't going to be perfect, but X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Okay? And write that down if you haven't already. And this is the radius. Okay? So we have a ge geometric approach to circles, which is that a circle is, you have a set spot, and you have a set length, and then what comes out of that? I've always told students as a fun little piece of lore, um, a circle was like wanting to define the area of a circle is it's like I've got a I've got my goat, I've got a rope to make sure my goat doesn't run off, and I've got a stake in the ground that I'm gonna ch -ch 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 tie my goat to. Now people might have this with their dogs in their backyard, right? How eat the grass, right? Or or roam without getting into somebody else's goat's way, right? So that's what you want. That's how you get the area of a circle. Their circumference of a circle is based on that length of rope or the radius, right? And, I, and I've and i always joked about like banging the, the stake in the ground because that sets the place, right? And that's the center, okay? That's the center. It sets the place. It's, it's the locus. That's where we get that word, location, locus. Boom, okay? So <clears throat> the reason I mention this, the reason I'm mentioning this in general is because the standard form, because that's not, that's not the standard form. That's like saying slope intercept form of a line, right? This is H squared, the thing that I showed you. Was this is the standard form of a circle. X squared plus Y squared plus AX plus BY plus C equals zero. That's the standard form of a circle. Now, do you recognize that? AX plus BY equals AX plus BY equals C is the standard form of a circle. But we swap this out over here. Red rover, red rover, send our constant right over. And we have it equal to zero. Why did we do that? And the plus minus, it doesn't matter. It's the constant. So we put it in the plus form. We call it the standard form. Okay. But do you see how it builds on the line? What's fascinating? What's fascinating? You guys, understand this with me, that this little grid with these little basic ideas and squaring can create shapes. Like, can you appreciate that? They create shapes. Coordinate geometry or, or linear algebra, however you want to describe it, that's what happens. And they can even make three-dimensional shapes. How do you think a 3D printer works? Because that printer is told to drop a piece of plastic, hot plastic, in a, in a singular locus. But then it does that a billion different times. It prints it. Prints it. It's creating a 3D form from an idea of an equation. You know to appreciate? Here's what I want you to appreciate, okay? We're going to do a side, sidebar with Mist. I would like you to think of something that makes you go, wow, that's cool. How does that work? Okay? Just think of it for yourself. We can use 3D printing, for example. Your brain came up with that. Now I say your brain and you go, oh, Miss Thompson. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. I watched the documentary. We're going to, it's a sidebar with Miss T. I watched the documentary for the third time last night, Free Solo. Have you guys heard of that? Free Solo, Alex Honnold. 
Alex, I hope you're doing well. I'm not trying to, I mean, you made a film, so I'm going to talk about it. Alex Honnold free soloed up El Capitan, which I, I bite my nails every time I watch that. If you haven't seen it, it's on Disney+. Plus. Again, I'm not getting paid for any of this, but it, oof. it's good stuff. Terrifying Alex, my gosh. I can't even, okay. So, I can't even. But, so, I was watching it yesterday, and I was like, he was only able to do that. There are two reasons. Yes, from his own spirit. And good on you, seriously. But the other reason is all of the people who had climbed El Cap before. Because they literally, the first people to do it, right? In the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, so on. They found the routes. They found the handholds. And they shared that knowledge with Alex Honnold, who then meticulously studied it. I mean, when you're watching about the thing, it's the bouldering problem. And he's like swapping the thumb. I mean, he's on the freaking cliff. And he like throws his leg out. Down to literal centimeters with the right kind of chalk on a granite face. And it's because he, he not only had he practiced it a thousand times, but because other people had made it clear that that's the route. Mathematics is the route that thousands of years worth of humanity has put forward of explaining our world. And you have the capability to tap into that if you just practice. I'm getting goosebumps because the human mind is extraordinary. You are extraordinary. This vehicle is the most fascinating vehicle you'll ever own. Although I still want a convertible. So we're not going to do a ton of problems on this. I just wanted you to recognize this is the standard form of a circle. Okay. So what, what I wanted to talk about was that this has to go to this for you to see it. And how do you do that? You factor. So we're going to talk about factoring in the next week. Um, because you've got to get factoring down the same way you get your linear function down. And just a quick, I'm going to erase my, my, my line. I'm getting dirty. I got my little magnet in the corner. So I, whatever, this is big zero. It goes zero, nothing. So you change the form. You put the X's together. You put the Y's together. And then you borrow whatever you might need to fact. So you factor this. And you factor this and you use completing the square with the C. Okay, we're going to go over examples. But so that's how you get it back to this form. Okay, so if you're not comfortable factoring, if you're not comfortable completing the square, how can you ever find out if it's a circle or not? Okay, this is why you build on the skills. So here are the skills you need to move on in pre-calc. We already talked about linear functions and like lockstep. I'm feeling good about it. Factoring and completing the square. Completing the square. Completing the square. We'll do an example tomorrow. Happy birthday, you guys.